So what, what is interesting that is that the background to our studies um, um, is the well-recognized variation in colon cancer risk around the world. And uh, I had the privilege of working as a gastroenterologist in Africa and in the USA. And in rural Africa, we'd do colonoscopies and we'd never find polyps or cancer. And in African Americans, nearly 50% of them would have polyps at the time of first colonoscopy. So we knew there was a dramatic difference. And um, we also knew that diet, certain dietary items associated with high risk and low risk. And so therefore we went into the community and studied differences in the diet. Um, we confirmed that the low risk in Africans was associated with the intake of a high fiber foods, a large quantity of fiber, about 50 grams a day, and that the high risk in African Americans was associated with the, with the reverse, with a high meat, high fat, and low fiber diet. What we didn't know was the way that diet affects colon cancer risk. And we worked on the hypothesis that um, the diet affects the microbiota, the colonic microbiota, to produce metabolites which might be good and healthy for the colon or might produce inflammation and increase neopla neoplastic change. And that was so therefore we managed to get um, funding to go out to Africa and perform these studies. The NIH um, supported the uh, pivotal study which, um, in which we reversed the, sorry, we switched the uh, dietary intakes of a group of high-risk African-Americans and low-risk Africans, na na uh, rural Africans. And uh, we housed everybody under tight uh, conditions so that we actually cooked all the food and we served the food so we knew exactly what was eaten. And so we knew exactly that we had done the big dietary change that we wished to do. And the results were astounding. Um, within that two weeks, biomarkers um, of cancer risk measured by biopsy and by colonoscopy showed suppression of cancer risk markers in African Americans given the African diet and the reverse in Africans given the westernized diet. And in fitting with our hypothesis that uh, dietary effects are mediated through the microbiota, we found indeed that the microbiota changed reversibly at the same time with, uh, the, with an increase in butyrate producers in African Americans given the high fiber diet and a reduction in Africans given the westernized diet. Um, we also found that uh, bile acid, colonic bile acids, which are also associated with colon cancer, um, because if you have a high fat diet, you produce, your liver produces a lot of bile acids which go into the colon and uh, are changed or deconjugated by the mi microbes to secondary bile acids which are highly carcinogenic. And so reciprocally we found that Africans given the African American diet had a dramatic increase in secondary bile acids in the colon and the reverse in African Americans given the high fiber diet. We're really concerned that the um, USDA um, requirements for fiber are way below what they should be. Um, at the moment it's 22 grams of fiber per day for women and 35 for men. And our studies, um, together with a whole lot of experimental studies that we haven't been over, indicate that the ideal intake level should be at least 50 grams of, of, of fiber a day. Um, so therefore, in general, the way that you achieve, achieve that is to increase your intake of fiber-rich foods, such as beans, um, fruit, fruits, and vegetables. Um, if we do this, we'll get back to what we evolved to take long before the industrial revolution removed fiber from our diets. We're equally concerned or even more concerned that um, 
Eskimos, and our term native Alaskans, um, have got the highest um, risk of colon cancer in the world. And we previously thought it was very low because um, they have a high fish intake, lots of omega-3 fatty acids, which are anti-inflammatory. But, you know, the, the data shows that they've got the highest risk of colon cancer worldwide, over 100 per 100,000. And um, we're working on the hypothesis um, that al although their intake of high biological value meats and fish oils is good, they have a chunk missing from their diet, which is fiber-rich foods. And uh, with westernization, they continue to eat a lot of meat and fat, but they don't eat the f fresh berries and things that they used to before. So we're doing intervention studies to see if we can increase fiber supplementation to reduce cancer risk and prevent colon cancer deaths.